Hi. Hello, I'm Opal Mitchell. I work for the Nixon Library in Jacksonville. We're part of the Central Arkansas Library System. And um, today I'm going to be doing, um, for my Crafting with Opal uh, program, um, I'm going to be showing you how to make a earbud pouch. And I will grab one as an example. This is one I just made. Hello. Hi, Mitzi. How are you? Oh, no. My dog's barking. Sorry. Um, but this is an example of one of the ones that I just made. Um, we're not going to be putting a bunch of squares together like this. We're going to do solid pieces of fabric. But that's just an example of one. Um, and uh, I think that's all I need to show you. I'm going to show you the supplies that I have laid out um, and go over those. And um, hopefully, the only thing I didn't mention that you will will make it handy and easier, and I didn't think about it, was um, some needle and thread. Whenever we get ready to sew over the zipper area, we have to open the zipper, and I found a nice little trick where you can um, tack down the one end of the, the open part of the zipper so it won't come open while you're trying to sew it closed, you know, and everything. It, it makes things a little bit easier. If you don't have um, needle and thread to do that part, that's okay. I, I kind of fastened mine the first time around with um, just a couple of pins, and it, it did an alright job. This is just a little, a little bit easier way of doing it that I'll be showing you. Um, so let me switch over to the supplies. There's nothing there right now, but let me tilt it down. I'm sorry if you're hearing a rattling noise. That is my puppy dog running around. And uh, she doesn't seem to care that I'm doing stuff in here. <laughs> Here's another one. This is the one that I actually had a picture of. And that's with my earbuds in there. Let me kind of show you. Um, this one's just got a simple little half ring that I put on there. And the one I just did, I did a actual circle ring. It's just different um, pieces that I had. Um, if I ever take something apart uh, that I'm getting rid of, like maybe, say, a dog collar or something that my animals wore out, I'll hang on to the metal pieces if they're in still really good shape because you never know um, you, what kind of project you might be able to use them in. Um, here's um, just a regular key ring. And that's what I'm going to use on the one that I'm making for you guys tonight. You could always do one of these if you wanted. Um, you might want to make the, um, the, the piece that goes around it a little bit wider. Because this one's quite a bit thinner. So if you did one of these, well, it might not look too bad. But I'd probably make it a little bit wider if you're going to use one of those. But th those are all options. Let me show you. I have a little box of just different pieces and stuff of things that I hold on to. And these are just from old things that I had that, that pets outgrew or they tore up. And you never know whenever they might come in handy for some other kind of project. And then I've got other old pieces like that too. I mean, there was nothing wrong with them. And I've even taken these off of clothing or other things that I didn't use them on. You never know. They might come in handy for some other projects so you don't have to buy them. And another thing you could use, um, these come in different sizes. So if you don't want to use a ring, you could always use one of these. But the great thing is about this, that opens and closes. So you can put this on there and then later you can put it on. You don't have to do it while you're doing the actual project. The only time you have to attach it while you're making it is like this ring has no opening on it. It's solid. Um, and this one's the same way. This came from an old lanyard uh, that I that tore up. So you can use those. So I'm going to put those up. Those are just all examples. And I'm going to put all my other little examples over here out of the way. I'm going to keep this ring just so I can kind of show you how it's going to look. Uh, let's see. Um, and the other supplies. This is the tab that you cut out ahead of time. That's two inches by two inches. And then I've got two white for the interior and two of the print 
as exterior. And if you saw my face masking, um, fast face mask, um, sewing thing a couple of weeks ago, I used the same fabric. I still had some of it left over, so it's really cute. So I thought I'd use it. And then I'm going to use an orange zipper for it because I thought that was a pretty color. And this is basically all the supplies you're going to need besides maybe a ring. And honestly, you don't have to. If you ever think of putting it on your key ring, you can slide it on your key ring. It's not a not a big deal. So we've got all of our supplies. And um, let's see here. To start with, um, one of the pieces of fabric, we're going to be cutting it in half. So um, that will be this piece that goes on the zipper. So I'm going to just take a couple of these off to the side because we don't need those right now. And um, I'm going to press this too because we're, we'll need to sew that so we don't have to go back and forth as much to the um, sewing machine. I'm going to move that out of the way too because we're going to press these two pieces in half and cut them. And then we're also going to press the little tab so we're going to line up our ends, and we literally just want to cut it in half, so let me get my iron and make sure that I've got it in half there. I'm just going to press it. I'm just going to make it easier to cut it in. What does the back look like on the samples? Oh, let me see. Um, these, I didn't use solid fabric, I used squares, and I realized that that would be way too difficult to show today. It takes longer to put pieces of squares together, um, but, uh, mine look about the, about the same. They're squares on both sides. I just put the tab on this end for this one, and then I put the tab not on the end of this one. You can do it whichever way you want. Um, one, uh pattern I followed that had the squares, they put it here. The another one I had that had solid pieces of fabric, they they put it on this end where the zipper is, which I will say I do like it on this end because you can hold on to it. And it makes it easier zipping and unzipping your zipper with it being right here. So I do prefer it being on this corner. Um, you can still zip and unzip this one. Um, just a little bit easier. Um, being on the end, but really we're going to um, top stitch all the way around. And when you top stitch, and I went ahead and top stitched over the zipper on both ends, that made it a whole lot easier zipping and unzipping this one. So if you do prefer it with the piece on this end, then you don't worry about it. If you top stitch and go over both ends. You'll just notice on this one my zipper's a little open. Um, on this one it looks a little bit nicer. Um, I didn't have to top stitch over it. I can pull it all the way to the end. So that's another difference. Um, oh thank you Dee. Um, I really do enjoy doing the, the uh, squares. If you have done quilting before and you know how to piece squares together feel free to do that with yours if you want to and you don't find it more complicated. But I'm going to show a simpler version of this. So um, I really like these squares. Um, they came in a, a magazine that I used to get. It's like they give you project kits, and they gave me lots of squares to do, you know, and I, I just thought they were really cute, so I wanted to use them. But uh, it's, it's a UK uh, magazine called Molly Makes, and they give you, um, with each monthly magazine. They give you some kind of project. It could be sewing, it could be knitting, it could, well mostly, I don't know, I guess I never got a knitting one. It was mostly crochet. They give me a lot of crochet stuff, some needlepoint stuff, um, like embroidery and different things like that. And they even gave uh, some uh, weaving type stuff too that was cool. Okay, so um, Oh, hey, Amy. Cool. And there's um, V, too. Hey, how are y'all doing? Um, so I'm just ironing my first piece of fabric in half. And then I've already done... Well, I'm going to press it just a little bit more. Just to make sure it wasn't 
I think my iron was uh, kind of off earlier and it didn't get real hot. So, and I'm going to do that to this one too. Let's see. Make sure that they're as even as possible. Okay. And we're just going to cut them in half after we do that. Thank you. Yeah, I really like the fabric too, um, Amy. Um, I got it from uh, Joann's a few years ago and for some other um, project, uh, it was a something for a friend of mine and I had leftover fabric and I never like to throw away my leftover fabric. I'm going to have to step over and get some scissors. Oh. You'll hear my puppy dogs running around here making noises too. <laughs> Zoe's. Zoe's in the floor. Yes, you are. Yes, you're begging. But I can't. I can't play with you right now. Sorry. <laughs> and my other puppy dogs are running around here somewhere too. So once we get this pressed, we're just going to cut it in half. Oh, there's Lucy. She ran in here too. She has to be with me. Zoe's already gone. She she likes to check on me, but she doesn't have to be with me all the time. <laughs> like Lucy. Lucy has to be with me most of the time. All right, so we're going to just cut both of these in half. Yeah, you can never have too much fabric. That's why, well, I kind of had to stop myself from doing it, but <laughs> every time I'd go to Tuesday morning and they'd have some different pretty fat quarters and stuff, I would uh, buy them all the time because they were just so pretty. And then I got I got enough of a stash that I thought, okay, two drawer fulls of fabric yeah, I probably should go ahead and stop buying some for now <laughs> until I make a few things. Uh, but that's come in handy during the pandemic here. I haven't had to go shopping for any fabric for any of the projects that I'm doing because I have plenty. <laughs> I've got a little bit of a ridge here that I'm trying to press down. Okay, so now I've got two halves and I'm trying to keep these two since it's a print. I'm trying to keep them lined up like this so I don't forget that these kind of line up. That's where I want my zipper to be, in the middle of that. I don't want to forget that's kind of... So I'm going to try to keep these when I move over to my sewing machine to keep those together so I'll know. Okay, let's see. I'm going to look at my directions to make sure I don't skip any steps. Um, oh yeah, I don't want to forget, just to keep from going back and forth from the sewing machine a lot, I'm going to go ahead and press my little tab also while I'm over here. I might even move these over by my machine real quick and get them out of the way and get my scissors out of the way too. So with your tab you're going to actually fold it in half. Um, if you've ever made bias tape um, or any kind of lanyards or anything like that or straps of any kind, this is pretty much what you do when you're when you're doing those. You fold them in half and press and then this is just a tiny tiny version of like a little strap or a lanyard. Then you're going to fold it into your crease. If you're really good you could fold both pieces inwards and then press it but I'm, I've am i got like a camera and a light and everything else in the way of what I'm doing so I I can't see real good what I'm doing, so I'm going to do it this way. I hope everybody can hear me good. I've got a new uh, setup here with a um, microphone, too, that I'm using. I was hoping it would be easier to hear me um, than just from my regular microphone on my, my um, phone. And I've literally just folded the other end inward so I'm gonna have one complete piece like that. Alright, so I'm gonna try not to steam my fingers. Alright, I think it didn't yeah, it did okay. So now it's nice and pressed evenly on both ends. And what we're gonna do in a few minutes, we we're just gonna sew down the edge of that. Um, so I'm going to lay that over by my sewing machine too. Move this out of the way. We will do a little bit of moving back and forth. I'm going to try to not do it real often because I have to move my whole, whole thing here. So here we go over to the sewing machine. And I'm going to lower 
this. Hopefully not move around too much. Lower some more. Let's see. And then tilt. So you can see my my sewing machine. And then we'll try to get a little bit closer. And hopefully I can reach um, the pedal of my sewing machine so I can actually sew. <laughs> That's going to be fun. This, this stand, I had to turn it a certain way so everything wouldn't tip over. It's a little heavy on top now with this, this really bright light that I got to go with it. All right. I'm probably going to have to move a few things around so I can get to stuff a little bit easier because this all of this is in the way. Um, we're going to start with sewing the zipper. So um, you're going to need a zipper foot for your sewing machine. Um, but you know what? I'm going to sew that tab piece first because I've got my regular sewing foot on there. I'm going to do that right before I switch pieces. All right, let's see if I can reach around everything without tipping anything over. All right, so I got my tab piece, and that's my open end right there. So um, I'm going to make sure my thread's over to the side, and I'm going to insert this in. And I'm going to go in a little bit because this is a tiny piece. It's better if you're sewing on small pieces to um, back up first before sewing forward. It, it makes things a little bit easier. It tends not to eat your fabric as much. So I'm going to back up. Oh, and I went a little too far, so it might eat my fabric. I'm going to try not to. Oop, there we go. Don't move. Just trying to shift around on me a little bit. Small pieces of fabric are kind of difficult. Uh, don't move that fast. I think I'm having problems with all the little stuff I've got here. And I'm going to grab on the other hand here to kind of shift it just a little bit. And I get our... All right, and I'm going to go one more and then reverse. Okay, and then go forward. Yay! All right. I got that piece. And, oops, I didn't lift it all the way. I'm going to use my little clippers here and clip it back here because I don't have a whole lot of room to pull it off to the side there. So now over to the side where you can't see me, I'm trimming off my other pieces of fabric or threads. Okay, I did get it a little funky on the bottom, but not a big deal. Oh, Shay's watching. Hi, Shay. Um... But that's all right. This is at the very end anyway, so you're going to be folding it, and it's going to get sewed over. So a lot of that's not going to be noticeable. I, I probably should have not backed up quite so far and gotten a little closer to the edge. But I'm going to put this over by my sewing machine because I'm going to need to press this in a few minutes to flatten it out a little bit. And um, I want it over there whenever I'm pressing um, the rest of my work because um, I'm going to press... The um, once I got my fabric sewed onto my zipper, um, we'll we'll be wanting to press that too, and I'm going to move out just a little bit. If you've never worked with zippers before, I'm going to kind of show you how you need to line things up, and I need some pins. All right, so I'm not going to do the the outside fabric first. I'm going to do my inside fabric first. So you take your zipper and you're going to flip it over to the back side and um, since this zipper is longer than what we need we're just going to position the fabric in the middle of the zipper and um, so this is the back side and I'm going to lay this piece over on the edge right here on this edge uh, you don't want it on the other edge because what we're going to do is we're going to sew over the top. And when you turn it, it's going to be that way on the zipper. And I'll have to switch over to my zipper foot before we do that. So let me pin this in place. So you get it as close to the edge of the zipper as possible. 
and try not to pin yourself like I just did. And then you're going to pin it down. And you're just kind of pinning it through, um, like you can kind of see from the other side like that. And just kind of get it lined up. And and I'm, this one's kind of a short piece that we're working with, so you're not going to need a whole lot of pins. Um, I like this white fabric I'm working with right now because the example I did earlier, um, I guess it was some cheaper thinner fabric. And when I was sewing with it, it it really, my machine wanted to eat it a lot. It seems like the thinner the fabric is, sometimes your machine, it's not real friendly <laughs> with that kind of fabric. All right, so we've gotten that one pinned in place. And I'm going to show you again in case some people are just starting to watch. This is the back side of the zipper. This is going to be the lining on the inside. So we're going to sew down this side, and then it's going to flip open, and we'll press it. But that'll you'll be able to tell that more here in a minute. And we're going to have to switch what kind of zipper or foot we have on our machine. So I'm going to scoot a little bit closer so you guys can kind of see a little bit better. I try to keep this centered because sometimes this ends up looking a little bit different once it gets transferred um, on Facebook. Okay, so I just released my other foot. And usually most of them have a little um, toggle on the back of here to release it. So I'm just going to set that to this side. And with this zipper foot, I'm going to move my... I usually use move my uh, thread back over here all the time. But I want my zipper foot to be on this this side. Let's see here. That's kind of tangled around my... There we go. I want it to the front. You're going to place it right underneath it. And then I'm going to lower my foot. And it's going to click into place. So if you see, I've got it on this side, not this side. Because the way that we're going to be sewing, um, we need it on this side. So I'm going to move my thread over to here. But you want it to go through the little piece right here. Um, to keep it all lined up and nice. Okay. Alrighty. So now I've got everything set up. And um, I'm going to line up my side of my zipper foot with the side of my fabric here. And I'm going to go in a little bit so I can do some backing up right in the very beginning. So I'm going to place it right there, right along the edge. And you just make sure you could feel the zipper that the zipper's right here. You, you can kind of see the bump of it. You don't want to hit, oops, sorry, I hit my camera. You don't want to hit the, or sew on the zipper. You want to sew right next to the zipper. So I'm lowering my needle in there. So it'll be a little bit easier to get started here. And um, I'm going to initially back up. So I'm going to back up and sew backwards first. Just to the edge. And I went further than I really wanted to. So I'm going to, because everything shifted just a little bit. I'm going to sew forward. I'm actually going to manually sew forward because sometimes when you get close to the fabric like that, it'll bunch up the fabric. That time it didn't. I, I lucked out. Um, sometimes it will. So I like to manually make it go forward just to so I can control it a little bit to keep it from doing that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sew forward and keep it lined up with the edge there. And <laughs> always watch this because, you know, you can... Get, your hand can get hit by that if you get your hand in there too far. So I'm going to sew just down the edge here. Just keeping it lined up. And I'm going to stop and take out my other needle. Just keep it lined up. My fabric is bunching just a little bit. Uh, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and move that one too. You get to the end here. Let's see. I'm gonna get a little bit close, so I'm gonna back up a couple. I don't want to get all the way to the ends because sometimes it will kind of bunch up. All right, so now I'm to the end of my zipper. All right, I'm gonna take that out and I'm pulling it to this side and it's getting hung because of the zipper. Darn you. 
<laughs> there we go. I wanted to, that way my thread is pulled this direction. I want to keep it over here and I, con I keep constantly having to shift it back and forth. So I'm going to try to keep it over here this way. All right. So you got that one piece um, sewed down. So when you flip it, you can see that it's on this side. I'm not going to press this right now. Um, I'm going to press it in a few minutes, but um, I'm going to go ahead and tack um, my other piece in place before it and sew it. I'm just going to move the fabric down right now. Once I get both of them sewed on there, um, on this side and the other side, then I'll press it. And a lot of times I'll press it um, right after I sew it, but um, since I'm doing this with everybody watching, I don't want to be moving my camera back and forth a whole lot, so I'll do it later. It, it's not a big deal waiting and, and doing it later. As long as you make sure that your fabric doesn't come back over, you just don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to line it up with this edge. And the main thing is you want to make sure that it's lined up with the other fabric. So, I got this one lined up. I guess I didn't measure them exactly because that one's a little bit, this piece seems a little bit bigger than that piece, but that's okay. We're going to, it's got a little extra fabric than what we need anyway for the circle. And I didn't quite get that to the edge. You can see the zipper still. Ow. <laughs> this is always fun trying to do this kind of stuff with all kinds of things in the way. Well, I could see my zipper just a tiny bit, but that's okay. And this is still the bottom or the back of the zipper. All right. So now that I've got that pinned in place, we're going to sew, sew down this side. Always. Okay. So we're going to switch back over here. Get a little bit closer so you guys can see. So we're going to get back in here, and that's kind of in the way, so I'm just going to move it. I'm just going to have to be careful about my, make sure my fabric's lined up. Okay, and pull all the way over, and you want to line the foot up. I'm going to shift forward just a little bit, because I don't want it, I think this one will bunch up on me because of the fabric being a little frayed. Okay, so I'm going to back up. Just a little bit, and then hopefully, I'm going to go forward manually because, yep, my fabric wants to get bunched. So once I sewed once, I'm going to shift it just a little bit. There we go. All right, so that's going to do fine. So now we're doing the same thing. We're keeping it lined up with the side of the foot there. Do a little back stitch. All right, so we got this side on, and it's only because it's a this kind of zipper foot that I like to bring it back here and cut it. Normally, on a normal one, I would bring it back over there. Okay, because I like to use the the um, thread cutter that's on the side of my machine, but. I'm just trying to make this a little bit easier. Okay, so I've got that. I'm going to cut the excess threads off the other side. All right. So now we're going to be doing the other ones. So now we've got our interior fabric, and that's on the inside. 
All right, so as long as they're out of the way and flat, we're good. Now we want to be putting, and that's where I cut it in the middle. So that's how I want them to lay. Okay, so that's going to be fun remembering how that's going to work because we need them to be facing this way. So that one needs to go there, and that one's going to go the other way. So here we go. We're going to line it up like we did with the others, and you can kind of see um, the white behind it, so you want to keep it lined up with the white fabric behind it just like that and this one seems a little bigger than the one underneath which is fine all right I'm actually thinking I might need to press it because I can feel this moving around on me a lot so um, I don't want that to do that to me so I am gonna go ahead and press it I'm sorry I have to move move you guys to do that real quick but I think it, things will work out better if I do it that way. So I'm going to raise y'all up and raise you up again and move. Oops, I'm tangled up in some wires. Okay, come over here. bit where you can see what I'm doing. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and press this too while I'm over here. I'm gonna wake up my iron because it's been more or less, I guess, kind of sleeping. Okay, I'm gonna press this first. I'm just folding it in half. <laughs> Got it pressed. All right, and then we're going to lay these as flat as possible. Oh, huh. Wonder where that came from. Hmm. Oh well, I've got orange on my white fabric. Not gonna worry about it. Oops. Okay. All right. So now I'm gonna press this down a little bit. Okay, so now I've got those pressed. All right. Hmm. Am I bleeding or something? <laughs> I guess, huh, that's weird. That almost looks like blood. Oh, well, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move back over here to the sewing machine. And... Lower everything back down again. And I probably need to tilt this back up. And then lower this down. Alright. So this will make it a little bit easier when it comes to putting my fabric on here. Because this is going to kind of stay in place now. All right, so this is the front of my zipper, and then I'm still looking to see where I cut my line at. So I'm going to put this face down, but it's going on the opposite side. Well, whoops. Yeah, that's fine. As long as I, well, I don't want to confuse myself. I'm going to turn this around. Well, it really doesn't matter. As long as it's on this, this edge right here, because when you flip it, it's going to go like that. And I'll just have to remember that that's the edge that needs to face the zipper on the other side. All right, so I'm going to line this up with the other fabric and on the edge of the zipper. Oh, Mitzi, yeah, maybe that was probably it when I stuck my finger. Yeah, I probably bled whenever I stuck my finger earlier. You are so right. <laughs> that's probably where it came from because that sure does look like blood <laughs> and the tip of my thumb does look like there has some dried blood on it too <laughs> oh dear I am clumsy that's one of the things about um, 
sewing and needles and stuff. I don't know that I've ever made myself bleed before. I've stuck myself plenty of times, but I don't think I've ever made myself bleed. Okay. So just lining that up. All right, so now we've gotten that, and that's the main thing you want to make sure that your fabric is face down because you're going to be flipping it over. And my fabric seems a little not quite lined up. Maybe it was just shifting. Okay, that looks good. All right, so now we're going to go back over here and sew this part. Trying to watch all these wires that I've got underneath me, too. All right. So. I'm going to line this up, and I'm doing this exactly the same way I did the other stuff. I am going to start inwards just a little ways, and I've got it lined up. This one, I'm going to kind of get it a little bit closer. To the zipper, I'm still not going to hit the zipper, but I'm getting really close, closer to it than I did whenever I had the other lining, because I I want to make sure that my stitches that show through on this side, let's see, can't really see it because I'm covering it up um, from the other side. I want to cover them up. Um, I don't want them to show from the other one, so I'm coming in just barely a little bit closer just to make sure I'm going to cover up those stitches that you won't see them. Okay, so I'm going to back up first. Yeah, that's probably... I'm going to do one more stitch because I want to get... Oh, it's getting hung, isn't it? It's kind of shifting on me. That's good enough. We'll just go forward. Take that out. I'm going to have to move my pen holder back over here. I'm just trying to stay a little bit closer to the edge or the interior part. You can kind of see a little bit of my fabric, just a tiny bit on this side. I had it lined up really good when I had it on the other one. I'm trying it shifted just a little bit on me. If you ever notice things not quite going right, just try to slow down a little bit. That'll help you. And always try to keep your fingers up front instead of back there where you might get hit. Okay, I'm going to backstitch. All right, that is good. All right, so that one's done. And I'm going to bring it back over here like I did last time and cut it out of the way. Oops. Okay. So, now you can kind of see... Yeah, looks like I... See, this is what I was trying to cover up is those stitches by getting just a little bit closer. All right. So we got that side. I'm going to cut off my extra threads. Alright, I got my threads. So now we're going to put the other piece on. Alright, so I'm going to have to flip this over. Alright, and so Remember, this was the edge I wanted up along the inside of my zipper. You can always just kind of... Oops. Huh. Doesn't look like it's lining up, does it? Hmm. Interesting. I guess it ate too much of it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. These are really small ones. So, whenever I sewed it and folded it, it disappeared quite a bit. Okay. Well... Bigger images that will make a bigger difference, but these are much small ones. Um, sewing down a good, that's almost a half an inch of your fabric, it takes away that much of it, so it disappears. So it's not going to line up nice and cute like I thought it would, but that's okay. It, this one's a, a small 
print, so that tends to happen with small ones. All right, so, oh, Susie's watching. Hey, Susie. Oh, yeah, they tell me to keep up with how many people that watch, too. Um, I've noticed people have been coming and going, so I'm going to kind of keep a small little tally here somewhere. Let's see, we had Mitzi, we had Shay, we had Amy, and, oh, let's see, I remember him, and then Susie. Yep, all right, that's who I can remember so far. Uh, Martin, that's right, Martin. Let's watch. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Brian was watching too. Oh, and Dee was watching too. Let me. That information disappears later, so um, it's kind of hard to. <laughs> They're wanting us to keep up with how many people actually watch these um, that we do. All right. In my memory, even from one moment to the next, the short-term memory is not the best. All right, so of course we've got the fabric face down again. And we're just lining it up with the edge of the fabric. Trying to avoid pinning my fingers again. <laughs> I don't want to bleed on my fabric like I did earlier. And really, this little circle pouch that I'm doing, I mean, it's for earbuds. You could use it as a little coin purse. You know, it's it's just a cute little project. You, you don't have to use them for earbuds if you don't want. Okay, so I've got it all lined up with the side there. Now we're going to switch back over to the sewing machine again. Trying to line that up and turn it again. Oh, yeah. I was going to put it in there wrong. All right. So. Gonna, and I'm going to try to be a little bit closer again like I did the other side. And I want to start a little bit further in. I'm going to have to move my pen out of the way to make that happen better. Okay, so I'm going to start with that in my fabric. I always like to start with it in my fabric. It just seems to do better. So I'm going to back up and then go forward and it tried to eat. There we go. Tried to bunch my fabric up a little bit, but that's okay. That's a good thing about going slow. You can catch those kind of things. And it is kind of difficult staying close to the zipper there. I'm trying not to bunch my fabric up. Hmm. Fabric is shifting just a tiny bit, but that's okay. Well, my sewing foot is uh, not cooperating. It's, uh, or yeah, it's trying to shift away from me as I'm, that's why it wasn't going anywhere there for a moment. Oh, oh well, that'll be all right. It'll make it. And then we'll back up. And there we go. Okay, so now we're done with that piece. And we're going to be using the zipper foot one more time here in a moment to um, actually um, do a top stitch. But I'm going to iron my fabric down first before we do the top stitching. Um, so... Let me get rid of my excess threads again. I'm doing this off to the side. I don't want to move you guys around while I do that. That's way too much moving. Okay. So, that looks pretty good. Looks like I covered up the other stitches with my top fabric. So all you see is, the only bad thing is, one of mine I got closer to the edge than the other. But that's not a huge deal. Zippers are a little bit to get used to as far as um, working with zippers. Okay, so I'm going to take this over here and press it. And then we're going to do um, the top stitching. All right. Oh, I'm trying not to get all my wires tangled. Tilt 
that to wake that back up again. All right, so now we've got... This is really the hardest part. Um, once we start putting it all together, it's going to be really quite easy. Um, this is the part that takes the longest. All right. And I might even... <coughs> Let me look at my directions real quick, just to make sure that once I do all of that, um, top stitch, press the tab, and then do the top stitch, and tack my zipper. Mm, I think I will go ahead and do that right now. Um, let me get that because that's something I, I wouldn't have to move back and forth again. So I already have some needle and thread ready. And um, what I'm going to do to tack it, and, um, after I do my top stitching here, I'm going to fold this and put this down and sew it down. But we want to keep this zipper from coming apart while I do that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do, tack it where it stays together. And I'm going to start on the back side of the zipper. So my knot, my thread knot, will be back there. And we're just going to keep this as close together as possible. Hmm. I thought, oh, my white, my white fabric is further over. See how that looks. So it's not quite lined up. Okay, so those are lined up good and those are a little further over. That's lined up good, but that one shifted quite a bit, didn't it? Hmm. I'm just gonna, gonna test something real quick, make sure. Okay, I've got plenty of room still once I put my circle down to to do that later. Let me see. Yeah, if I come here, that'll still not show. Okay, I just want to make sure that this tacking part um, won't show. Alright, so I'm going to go directly across on the other side of the zipper. Uh, I'm going to straight as possible. Here, I'm going to zip this up just so that it's not so far apart. So I can kind of see. Because you, the whole point is you're wanting to bring it close together. All right. Ah ha ha. <laughs> All right. So, and I'll move that again. All right. So I'm going to be bringing it together like that. So now I'll just make sure that I'm coming on and you'll only have to do this a few times just to hold it in place I'm trying to stay just in the zipper area and try to stay as close to the same holes that you make as possible and I might do it one more time just for that seems tight enough, but I just want to make sure. Seems like I got it. Oh, it's just a bunch of little threads. It's okay. All right. Now, when you're doing a normal tack, um, this is something that's going to get covered up and not seen. There's other ways of tacking it that you want it to be more secure than this. This is more or less kind of temporary because we're going to be sewing over this area and it's going to. The sewing over it's going to really hold it in place, but this is just just to hold it together while we're sewing over it with the the little tab that we're putting on here. All right, so we got that. All right, so I got that tacked down, and we'll kind of need that out of the way anyway. Um, but now we're going to do our top stitches on each side, and once we do that, we're going to sew this little tab, go across here and sew it down. Once we get those, then we're going to come back and get these pieces 
and um, put them all together and draw our circle. And it, we really don't have a whole lot left to do. This this is um, this part is really the hardest part that takes the most time. So let's get back over here. Does anyone have any questions about? I noticed. Um, I'm wondering. Did you, you guys, I noticed a lot of you are the ones that uh, came last uh, week for the uh, crochet class. I was wondering how y'all were doing with that. If y'all uh, were able to figure out, you know, where you were having problems before. If everything was working out with the that crochet blanket. I hope I answered. I know I came back later and... Um, had two different uh oh i'm having trouble getting scooted back in here um um i had two different comments i went back and gave y'all on on those um because you had questions about it um i hope y'all were able to understand what i was talking about to to help y'all out there let's see okay so now i'm going to be getting close to the edge here because I want to top stitch right next to the edge. And I may end up having to move my zipper out of the way at one point. And I'll show you what to do whenever you want to do that. And I'm going to have to shift this a little bit more. And I think I'm going to tilt it. So you can... I don't think I quite have it tilted right. Alright. Hopefully it won't tip over on me. Okay. Alright. So I'm going to reverse... Come on. There we go. I got a little bit further back. Or, yeah, that's okay. And I'm trying to keep it lined up with the edge of the fabric here. If you can kind of see right here, um, the, the foot is on the very, very side edge of the fabric. And as I'm going forward, I'm going to hit my zipper. So, I'm going to put that needle into the fabric, lift my pressure foot, and jiggle that past it, and then put my pressure foot back down. There we go. It's out of the way now. Whoops. So now we can go forward. Trying to keep it lined up. I am have a lot of trouble keeping it lined up sometimes. So one more time, and then I'll back up. All right. There we go. Pull it out over here. I think I got close. Yeah, got closer this time with the camera and light. It's a little more difficult to get my hands through there. All right. Um, is everything working still I, I don't really notice anyone saying anything so it makes me nervous sometimes that maybe uh, maybe things have locked up or froze up or something <laughs> but y'all are still out there right uh, hopefully I hope all right we're going to sew down the other side so I'm gonna get it really close to the edge again and I'm going to do my backup stitches first. Oops, sorry. Oh, we're getting close to the zipper again. So I'm going to leave that in there. And I'm going to lift up my pressure foot and get that zipper by and move it down again. And then we're going to get to the end here and then do some back stitches. Alright, so that's done. And um, that's all that we have to do with the zipper foot. So I'm going to get that zipper foot out of here. 
so we can do um, the little tab, put it in place. So let me switch back with that. Oh, good. You can hear and the, the lighting's good. Okay, good. Thank you. It's nice to know. I kind of wonder sometimes. I'm going to put that back in. Now I got my regular pressure fit in there. I think this light I bought hopefully makes things better. <laughs> well, thank you, Susie. Uh, this is a different Susie, but thank you about the fabric. Yeah, I, I love this fabric too. I'll be sad when I I run out and there's no more projects that I can make with it because <laughs> I I don't um, I've never seen it at, at um, Joann's again. Sometimes they I notice they get like some really cute stuff that if if you don't get it right then you never get it ever again. Okay. So, um, on this end where the zipper is going to close, this is so, super close, but we're going to sew down our, our little tab right there. So, without moving things around too much, I'm going to place it at the edge here, and I'm going to sew across there to sew it in place. Um, I'm debating whether or not I should actually... I don't think I can really pin it in place. I don't believe. So I'm just going to have to hold it to make it work. All right, and so I'm pulling my thread out of the way. And then I'm going to try to line this up with the middle of my zipper as close as I possibly can. It's hard to see. I think I've got that lined up. And I'm kind of going to start in the middle instead of on the end because this is so small. And I also have to keep in mind exactly, aha, some fabric got flipped. We do not want that. Make sure all my fabric is not, okay. If you don't want to sew that under, that would be pretty terrible. Um, I think I'm going to start right about here. Um, I'm trying to remember where, because one of these... The fabric came over quite a bit. Yeah, it was this one. Yeah, so I do want to start. Oops, sorry. Start right there in the middle. And um, if you're really nervous about sewing really small pieces like this, you can manually do it by holding down your pressure, like I'm doing a back stitch. And I'm going over the. Um, actual zipper area and um, sometimes you can have more control over it doing it manually like this okay so now that I've gotten that kind of tacked down a little bit I'm gonna try actually sewing forward just a little slowly oopsie sometimes it has trouble getting through the plastic which is okay you just go slow all right I'm going to go one more and then go back. All right. I think that's tacked down good. So we're going to pull that out. And clip it. Oh, wow. Bunches of threads everywhere. Okay. Oops, I didn't get one of the ones on top. Okay, so now I got my tab sewed down, and we'll have to pay attention to that whenever we're laying all of our pieces in place. Okay, um, that's all the sewing we have to do over here, and so now we got to put our pieces together. So I'm going to tilt y'all up just a little bit, and raise you, raise you some more, and then walk you over here. All right, so let me get my pieces and make it where y'all can see what I'm doing. All right, so try not to tip y'all over. All right, so there we've got that. Now we want 
the right sides facing each other and all of these pieces were supposed to be five by five but of course um, they shrink up on here because you've attached them to your zipper okay so what I'm gonna do is since these are bigger I'm gonna flip it over to where my zippers at because you wanna when you're drawing your circle that you're going to be sewing around and I want to keep this little tab in mind also I want to make sure that I I covered this little area up so you can kind of see it from here too so and I got lots of little threads um, let's see here make sure that everything is lined up correctly yeah as much as possible all right and this is my circle and the zipper my zipper is not open as much as it should be because we're going to have to turn it right side out. So I'm going to open it not quite all the way and I'm going to turn the zipper where it's facing this direction, not that direction. Because if you get it too close to the edge and it's turned that direction and you sew over it, you break your needle. That's happened in a class before and it actually broke our serger needle. <laughs> and I did it because <laughs> I didn't realize the zipper was that close to the edge. But you learn from your mistakes. I know, or I try to anyway, myself. Okay, so now here's our circle. Alright, and this is just going to, yay, because we want it right on the edge there too. That's why we wanted to make it a little bit bigger. Alright, and um, after I draw my circle, I'm going to be actually sewing on the inside of where I drew my line. So that just helps a little bit to make sure you've got plenty. Because see how close to the edges we are here? We just want to make sure that uh, we're not going to uh, sew um, off, off of the fabric. You want to make sure you get all of your fabric, um, all the pieces together. And this is a fairly large design, so if you make it a little bit smaller, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I can't remember, uh, Mitzi, if you were there the day that I broke the... It was one needle. It has two needles on the serger, but I broke one of them. Oh, yeah, you were there because it was the um, the little um, zipper pouch for what we were going to wear around our necks for our phones, the cell phone holders. Yeah, yeah, it was that class. I think that was a pretty memorable class because <laughs> we all had problems that day. Uh, you know, it happens. <laughs> Not everything works out perfectly all the time. That was a hard one. I hope this one's a little bit easier. I, I find this one pretty easy. Okay, so now we got our circle um, drawn. And um, the if you'd clicked on this pattern, um, let's see, this pattern right here, it has a website and everything. I whited out what she wrote there because she said to cut them out ahead of time to all the circles but trying to get all the circles all lined up together is not fun uh, the other the directions I got for the similar project she just had you put them all together like this draw the circle and then tr you know sew it together and then trim off the excess which I found a lot easier because the other way of doing it this way is a little bit more forgiving and so I'm gonna pin everything together and um, since this is a circle, it's really kind of hard to pin it the way I normally do. So I'm just going to um, keep it all inside where I don't even have to move my pins out of the way when I'm sewing. As long as my fabric stays in place. And um, I think I will pin the corners on the outside just a tad. I think that... I did that the very first time I made the first one because I made this is the third one I've made and I'm gonna flip it over and make sure that all of the fabric is all together that I didn't misalign anything okay alright so I've got fabric 
all the way to the edges of everything. The big part is here, even, yeah, good, it all goes to the end. Because that's, that's the ones that this fabric, that's why I want to sew on this side. Because this one is a little bit shorter than everything else. All the other pieces are longer, but this one, and that's why I drew it on this side, because I want to make sure, wherever the shorter fabric is, I want to make sure I'm on the inside of it and have plenty of room there. So now we're just going to sew all the way around. I haven't been following my directions. This, hopefully I've done this enough. Um, draw the circle, sew all the way around, trim the excess fabric, turn it right side out, and press and top stitch. Yeah, we're about done. Looks like we're doing okay. All right, so let's go ahead and sew this. like this is just a little too tilted. <laughs> I'm touching my sewing machine with the light. Oh, I see why. I think I was then doing the wrong thing. There's so many different little things to tighten and loosen on. Oh boy, really. Sorry about that. So many different things on here. That's better. I don't want to be too tilted. All right, so many wires in the way too. All right. Okay, so, and I'm gonna just start on the edge. <coughs> Let's see. And I just want to be able to see my blue because I want to sew right within the inside area of my blue lines that I drew. So I'm gonna back stitch first and then like your purple pin cushion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah you know me, me and you we like purple and then anything I get my hands on that's purple I, I like to buy it. Circles are, you have to kind of go slow when you're sewing a <laughs> circle. Not as easy as straight lines. Because you're constantly shifting your fabric. Usually I'm always pulling my needles out, but when you with something like this, you really don't have to, because you really don't pin it like you traditionally pin stuff. Okay, I'm all the way around, so we're going to back stitch, and we are good to go. All right, so I'm going to clip off all my excess threads. And show you how to. I'm going to take the rest of my pins out too. Um, the way I'm going to trim this up, um, you don't have to do this, but I find that whenever you're working with um, things that have corners to it, um, either a corner or circular type things, it's better to um, have something uh, like your um, uh, pinking shears to cut your 
Let's see, let me get those real quick. I got pinking shears to cut around the, so it's not a straight edge. When you got corners, usually the if you have just regular scissors, you would just cut around it and you would just clip out little segments like little, um, oh, um, little V's. To, so it's so it won't uh, pull whenever you're turning it right side out as much. But if you've got the pinking shears, they you know it makes little teeth marks whenever you're cutting around. I'm not going to use these on the zipper area, even though it's plastic and it should cut through it fine. I have found in the past when I used my regular scissors to cut zippers that it has messed up my zippers or my my scissors. These are some scissors I, I always use for um, cutting zippers because um, these are already kind of messed up. They've got divots in them. So um, I'm going to use this to cut my zipper. I'm not going to use my pinking shears for that. And so I'm going to cut. I'm trying to think how close to the edge. Just want to cut it off. I might want to cut more of it off here in a minute. Oops. Throwing those away. Actually, I think I'm going to bring my trash can over here. Because I don't want my pieces that I'm cutting going everywhere. Alright, so now that i got kind of those, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to let you see. I want this to just fall in the trash as I'm cutting it. So I'm going to get close to the zipper, but not right on it because I don't, like I said, I don't want to cut the plastic with these. I don't want to take any chances of ruining these scissors because the pinking shears are not cheap. And um, also, a good pair of fabric scissors. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just cutting the edges here. I'm trying to avoid the plastic. Here, let's see. Okay. Okay, so I am going to cut a little more excess. don't want a whole bunch. There we go. You don't want it too, too long on the ends there. Because these are pretty crappy scissors. I don't care about messing them up. Okay, so now we've got all of our excess cut all the way around. So... I'm going to move my trash can like down there so you can, I'm going to turn it right side out and press it. All right, so here we go. And you can work everything. <laughs> Push out, you might have to shift it a little bit with your fingers. Let me turn, wake my uh, iron back up again so it can press everything. And uh, pressing it will make it a little bit easier doing the top stitching. Okay, I'm gonna kind of close that up a little bit. Almost looks like a little pumpkin. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> I guess I'm thinking of a pumpkin because this one's got orange in it. My other ones didn't have orange in it, so it didn't even make me think of that. Okay. It looks a lot nicer once you top stitch it, too. sure everything's nice and flat. I don't think that the zipper would melt from the iron, but it does get pretty hot. Alright, so now what we're going to do 
is we're going to start on this side of the zipper and we're going to sew all the way around. We're going to sew over the zipper here and then come all the way back around. We're not going to sew over the, this zipper area um, because this little thing works pretty good. Um, let me show you the ones if you weren't here at the very beginning when I showed you the other ones I did. The very first one I did, I put the tab over here because that's the example, the one I was following, that's what they did. And I, I sewed over this because whenever I would zip it all the way to the end, I had a hard time pulling it down. So I sewed it, sewed it over, but I don't really like the way that looks. I like being able to pull the zipper all the way to the end like this one. And that's the way we're doing this other one. But then you go around and then you do sew over this end. And then, oh, you are going to make this? Yeah, this is pretty... Uh, it's a lot more fun to make than what I thought. I originally was not going to do one like that. Um, and But see how nice and close to the end it pulls up to the zipper? I like that. And then um, you just sew over this, this end too because it just makes it easier pulling it back again. But you could use this as a coin purse. It didn't have to be um, for your earbuds or whatever. Okay, so let me show you how to finish this up. Um... Move my trash out of the way. This will be the last time I move you guys around. All right. And... Arg. Yeah, yeah, it would make a great coin purse now that I'm, you know, looking at it and stuff. I mean, everything else that, um, the different places that I found the pattern, I've, I've seen it in several different places. They've all just did it as, um, as a, for your earbuds, but I think it would be a cute coin purse, personally. Um, so I want to start on this side of the zipper. I'm going to have to raise my... Um, pressure foot up a little bit because it's a, a bit thick so it's going to have problems getting that close to the zipper and I want it a little bit more to the edge than that all right so I'm going to start oops shifted it right next to my zipper and I'm actually going to walk it forward because it's so thick that my machine would probably not move it um, by itself. Um, sometimes when you have stuff this thick, it it won't go, won't move your your uh, stuff. Oh, I didn't even have the pressure fit down. It was so tight in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go forward a couple of stitches, and now I'm going to back up. I think it shouldn't having problems backing up a couple. Oops, I have to hold down the backup thing. Let me get all the way. There we go. One more. There we go. Now I want you to go forward, which I'm going to inch it forward. Okay, so very slowly. And I don't know if you can see it, but I'm keeping it like where you can see a little bit of a hole right there uh, where the... Um, Oh, what are they called again? Um, <laughs> oh, the parts that pull it forward. Uh, feed dogs are at. Um, and that's how I'm getting. So I can't see the edge of my fabric here, but I know that if I can see one little slit there where the feed dogs are at, then I'm, I'm really close to the edge. And that's kind of how I watch it to make sure that I'm keeping it where I want it. And the last couple I did, when I get over here, I had trouble going over it. So I'm going to manually walk it forward because it's going to have problems. Yep. It was not going to go forward. It, it really shot forward and when I did that. It just has trouble getting over the zipper because it's so thick there. But you can do this. All right, so I got over it. Oh, a phone charging cord caddy. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I should start a YouTube channel. That's cute. <laughs> Actually, this uh, takes a lot of time to do. <laughs> but it would be fun to do something like that, a YouTube channel. I do like che teaching. There, I'm trying to think. Phone charging um, cord caddy. I've seen one, um, a pattern for one that you can um, hang it from like a doorknob or something. It used a, um, what are they called? I'm so easily distracted. Here, let me grab some. Um, what are they called? Oh, curtain uh, grommets. I'll show you in just a minute. But yeah, you use curtain grommets as the for the handle area. It was really cute. I, I forgot what, what website I saw that on. But you could you make it with that, and you can um, hang hang it from like different things. And it was a little caddy it, in um, your phone. It, it holds the phone, and then um, you can hang it on a door or whatever while you're charging it. It was cute. And they just used one of one of these as the for the hanger part. All right, I'm doing this last part manually because it's so. Um, oops, there I go hitting it with my hands again. All right, I think I am done. I got all the way to the zipper area. I'm gonna cut that off. That's my little thing there. All right, so we are done with this. We just have to, see it zips all the way to the end there. Just have to get rid of my little threads. And sometimes that can be hard. <laughs> getting really with the zipper in the way there I do like this pattern though the little owls they're cute all right so it had, gives it a nice little finished touch um, to it and whenever I was picking colors and stuff for that I just picked a this because there was a little bit of that blue in here uh, just a tad and the orange just really stood out I love that all right so now we got a little thing that opens and closes all done and um, next week um, I'm not really sure I hadn't really th thought forward I was thinking about doing some kind of painting next week but um, let's see I'll switch this back around to where I'm at um, but I could also let's see there's too many lights in here now I needed them for <laughs> for you guys <laughs> but uh, um, I don't know. Um, I've got some other um, sewing ones that we could do. Uh, I've got the other, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, it was like a pin cushion, but you, it was using the little squares and stuff. I'm trying to make this work a little more easier to see. Um, hmm. Let me show you guys. Let's see. Hold on. Because I think someone was interested in it. Let's see. It was a pin cushion, but you could learn how to do putting squares together. Yeah. It was this one. That little pin. And it's a pinwheel. Um, it's not just... Um, but you do use little squares like I use to make these um, zipper pouches with. Um, but it's a neat little trick on how to do these. Um, one side will be the pinwheels and the other side will be just basic squares. Um, we could do that. Um, I've got that handy. We could do, um, there was some crocheted um, flowers that I could show you guys how to do. Um, but uh, if no one says anything, we'll just, uh, um, looks like Mitzi was wanting to do sewings again, so... We, we could we could do sewing again if you'd like that that would be fine um, if no one else makes any more comments about it then I'll just I'll just do another sewing one uh, I hadn't had a chance to play with the crochet stuff yet I was um, going to and I I've been making face masks for <laughs> for people so I in my free time so I haven't really had a chance to um, try out any new um, crochet things the flowers looked a little fun but um, yeah okay I yeah, crochet. You're you're good with that too. Okay, well I'll I'll play with it and see which one um, I can get around to first. Um, I'm looking. 
or if something else catches my eye. But yeah, that sounds good. Oh, Nancy came. You came at the very end, Nancy. Here, I'll show you what we what we made. The little zipper pouch thing that you can put your earbuds in, or uh, you can use it as a coin purse. I have a couple other ones that are really cute too, but that was the one I just made. <laughs> oh, you can see my Zoe painting in the background. I did my dog. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I guess until uh, next week, um, I'll be back here again at 7 o'clock and um, be possibly doing crochet or some flowers, crocheting flowers or uh, some more sewing. So um, I'll see y'all back next week. Bye until next time. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Bye.